In my video about Egyptian words that made it to English, you'll have seen that underneath each Egyptian word, I showed the same word in Latin characters. You'll also have noticed that sometimes I didn't seem to be saying the thing I'd written down. At one point, I showed you this, and had the audacity to pronounce it Harurat. I was doing two things here. Most obviously, I was inserting vowels I hadn't written down. But first, I'd written down an Egyptian word using Latin characters. This is transliteration, and that's what I'm going to talk about now. To start with, I want to mention the difference between transliteration and transcription. Transliteration is the process of turning each hieroglyph that contributes to the sound of the word into a letter of the alphabet. Barring a few asterisks, that's essentially it. Transcription is the process of producing a pronounceable word from those transliterations. The transliteration, um, yeah, this, for instance, doesn't lend itself to English pronunciation, so Egyptologists add in a few vowels here and there. With some exceptions, we don't have a lot of information on which vowels a word contains, so the convention is to insert an E. In the case of this poor man, this renders his name Paraherwenemef. The word I pronounced as Harurat could legitimately be transcribed as Hereret. Now, nobody believes these transcriptions are accurate, but they allow us to create pronounceable words from transliterations so that we can write them down in a way that readers can understand at a glance. I'll talk about transcription more another time, because there are some dark arts that we can apply to get closer to the true Egyptian pronunciation, but let's focus on transliteration. As soon as hieroglyphs became readable to modern Egyptologists, it became necessary to map the consonants of Egyptian to the consonants of the English, French and German that most Egyptologists were writing in. At present, it's believed that there are 24 consonantal sounds in Egyptian, which makes it about even with English. Remember, we're talking about sounds, not letters of the alphabet. We don't have letters of the alphabet for the first sounds in chocolate, shower and Thursday, but the sounds are very common in English. There's no one system for transliteration, but there are some more popular ones, and an awful lot of consistency between them. Sounds common in European languages, b, p, f, m, n, are universally agreed upon, and nuance shows up mostly when we're trying to wrap our Indo-European tongues around consonants that nowadays are mostly found in Afro-Asiatic languages such as Arabic and Hebrew. There are two systems in particular that I see most commonly used. Neither of them are that new, but among English-speaking Egyptologists, they're popular for their own reasons. Alan Gardner wrote a tome called Egyptian Grammar Being an Introduction to the Study of Hieroglyphs, which was published in 1927. Over the next 30 years, he would publish two further editions as new opinions were formed about Egyptian grammar. Since 1957, when the last edition was released, even more discoveries and discussions have taken place. So, Egyptian grammar is riddled with errors, but it's so thorough and expansive that there's no more recent equivalent. In it, Gardner spends almost 650 pages dissecting the grammar and vocabulary of Middle Egyptian, most iconically to Egyptologists in general. He created what we call the Gardner Sign List. If you see an Ankh and see S34 written nearby, that's referring to the fact that the Ankh is the 34th sign on table S of Gardner's list. The list is flawed, it's incomplete, and Gardner didn't cross-index it, so some hieroglyphs that are both, for instance, birds and gods, only appear on one of those tables. Wait, what? Alan, what are fishes? But the ability to refer to a hieroglyph with a simple pairing of letter and number means it's possible to put together easily machine-readable sequences of hieroglyphs, and I think that's neat. Based on previous transliteration systems, Gardner's contains a few characters not found in our alphabet. These are derived from Hebrew, since it was believed in the 19th century that Egyptian and Hebrew were more closely related than we now suppose. If you're looking up hieroglyphs online, there are good odds you'll see a transliteration that looks more like this, with a few capital letters and occasional numbers thrown in. This is the Manuel de Codage system, and was invented to be keyboard and computer friendly. 
Published by Berman et al. in 1988, the Manuel de Codage system is now the international standard way of recording hieroglyphs on computers. Standard Latin letters are used, along with Gardiner sign codes and a simple syntax of dashes, brackets and so on to accurately record elements such as line ends, cartouches and hieroglyph placement. It's worth noting, before I compare the two any further, that they do serve slightly different purposes. Gardiner, and most other transliteration systems, is designed to represent the phonology of Egyptian consonants to aid in translation. Manuel de Codage, MDC for short, is designed for efficiently documenting hieroglyphic texts on a computer. Plenty of hieroglyphs don't make a sound, and others make the same sound as other signs. Gardiner's system omits the silent signs, and doesn't allow us to know for sure which signs made which sounds. In other words, you can't transliterate back from Gardiner to hieroglyphs. That isn't the purpose of Gardiner's system. With MDC, a sign that makes no sound, or makes the same sound as a more common sign, is usually encoded with its Gardiner number. This means that, assuming a given text has been encoded properly, you can transliterate back from MDC to hieroglyphs with no loss of information. It's important to bear in mind when comparing the two and deciding which one is better than the other, that they are designed for very different purposes, so it is a bit of an apples to oranges situation. Just for fun, I'll show you some ancient Egyptian names you almost certainly know, written in hieroglyphs and transliterated using both of these systems. Osiris Tutankhamun Ramesses Isis Amun Pharaoh, and of course, our old friend Parahewenemef. In my videos, as you'll see, I tend to use something closer to the Gardener system with one or two more contemporary touches. I prefer it on the basis that it does demonstrate the fact that there are sounds in Egyptian that can't simply be expressed with the letters we use in English. I absolutely understand the value of Manuel de Codage. I think it's a fantastic innovation. I'm really glad that they came up with it, but I prefer the versions that show that Egyptian is not an Indo-European language. There are sounds that I, as someone who doesn't speak, for example, Arabic, will struggle to produce. That's it for now. I'll take another look at transliteration soon and talk about those non-Latin signs and why Manuel de Codage transcribed this as this. Thanks for watching. Head over to my channel for more, or click here to see what the algorithm thinks you should watch next. I hope you'll consider subscribing. If you'd like to support and collaborate on the channel directly, head over to patreon.com slash armchairegypt. You can also join my Discord community, there's an invite link in the description.